given the topic we cover today is mental status examination or we call it as MSC. If you come to the psychiatric setup, the psychiatric history collection or interview and the MSC together which gives an idea towards the diagnosis of psychiatric disease condition. So now we will see what is an MSC or mental status examination. In a simpler way we can say it is a clinical examination of a psychiatric patient. So if you come to the other setup, the clinical examination that is the uh, physical examination head to toe assessment is important for assessing the patient. But in the psychiatric setup we use uh, mental status examination. As a definition we can say that the mental status examination it is a standardized format. Here the clinician will record the psychiatric signs and symptoms of the patient. So it is a standardized, why we call it is a standardized, wherever worldwide we are using the same components for assessing the psychiatric patient. Now we will move to the uh, components or aspects of mental status examination. There are mainly three important components of uh, mental status examination or MSC. That is a physical component, emotional component and cognitive component or cognitive aspect. Come to the first one, the physical component of mental status examination. So while coming to this physical component, we will observe or we will assess the general appearance and motor behavior of the psychiatric patient and it start with whenever the healthcare professional, psychiatric professional, the first time they meet the patient. Come to the general appearance, it includes the grooming, the dressing of the patient, that is the personal hygiene we will see, the attitude towards the patient, the entry of the patient means how the patient is entering to the room, maybe willingly or forcefully they are brought to the room, that we will see, their posture and gait, their position and walking style we will observe, then the psychomotor activity, we will see the increased psychomotor activity or psychomotor retardation, then certain um, stereotypic movement and mannerism, repeated movements and mannerism we will observe and along with that even the sensorium, whether the patient is uh, conscious or unconscious. It is very, very important in the physical component. One example, if you say like a manic patient, they will be wearing a uh, bright color dresses, bright color makeup and the same thing if you go, uh, go to the uh, depressive patient or schizophrenic patient, we can observe that they will be having a poor personal hygiene, they may be wearing the torn cloth and psychomotor activity will be increased in the manic patient and it may be reduced in the uh, depressive or schizophrenic patient and the stereotypic movements and echopraxia, imitation of movements, all these things we can observe with a schizophrenic patient and that comes the physical component of mental status examination. Moving forward to the second one emotional component. It is related to the patient's feeling. So here mainly we will assess the mood and affect. So both are different but we are using as a synonym. So both are related to the emotional aspect. Mood is nothing but the subjective feeling of the patient and the affect is the objective observation we can say. And the mood we can say it is a uh, longitudinal. Longitudinal is an, it may last for few hours, few days or uh, few weeks it may last. We can ask the patient how do you feel, can assess the mood. The patient may be saying that I am happy or I am feeling sadness and the happiness or sadness at that particular moment how we can observe or what we can see on the patient face or their activity we can term the same affect. So we can observe the patient may be having a smiling face or sadness of the face so we can say the patient affect is uh, changed, maybe appropriate effect or inappropriate effect or sometimes the patient may not be having any emotional expression, we call it as a flat effect or sometimes the patient unable to express the happiness, we call it as anhedonia, all these things we can observe with the emotional component of MSC. Moving to the third one, important one, the cognitive aspect. So while coming to the cognitive component, we can say these are the higher mental activities of the person. So we'll start with the speech and thought. So if you come both together, we can assess with the patient. In the speech, mainly we'll see the rate, volume, tone, and flow of speech. So here we'll see how the patient initiate with the speech, voluntarily whether they are initiating or spontaneously they are initiating or they are giving only answer to the question. 
then their volume and tone, whether it is increased or reduced, then the flow will see. Means there is a continuous flow or not. Sometimes what happens that they will start with one topic, ends with another topic, what we call a tangentiality. Or sometimes they will uh, moving from one topic to another topic, they will be shifting, but they will try to connect it, what we call a flight of ideas. And sometimes what happens, from one topic to another topic they go, from there to another topic they will go, what we call it as a loosening of association. So all these things we will see in the speech and we will observe for a coherence also, means whether there is having a proper continuation. Come to the next one, it is a thought. In the thought, again we will see the stream of thought and content of the thought. In the stream of thought, we will see there is a flow is there or whether logical connection of ideas we termed as a thought. Whether they have a proper flow, that we will observe in the uh, stream of thought. And we can see whether there is a thought block, thought broadcasting, etc. in this stream of thought. Come to the next one, the content of thought. In the content of thought, we will observe any obsessional ideas for the patient and the important aspect what we we'll call what we see is delusion. Delusion is nothing but a false, unshakable belief we can say. So here you observe for uh, delusion of persecution, delusion of control, delusion of jealousy or delusion of reference, suspiciousness, etc. But these things uh, within a second or within a day we cannot observe. It may take maybe few weeks or few months we have to observe the patient. So patient may be giving certain clues related to this one. The patient may be saying that or any of the relatives, they are giving poison to me or some other people are trying to harm me or from other planet or from other area, uh, someone is controlling my activities. So all these things which leads to the clue related to the delusion. Moving to the next one, the perception. That is another important aspect, cognitive aspect of MSC. So here we'll mainly observe for the hallucination and illusion. The false unshakable, sorry, false unshakable belief is the delusion and the perception, the hallucination, the imaginary perception and illusion. It's a wrong perception in the presence of a stimuli. Usually we'll observe for the auditory hallucination and visual hallucination. Among this, auditory hallucination is very common with the patient. So we'll observe for the self-talking. Sometimes the patient may be murmuring or whispering or they may be listening to someone. Like that we can see with the patient. And you can ask to the patient also. Like uh, uh, whenever you are sitting alone, are you seeing or are you hearing something? Or I am, are you hearing some voices? Are you hearing someone's sound? Like that we can ask to the patient. If patient is saying yes, we can suspect that the patient is having hallucination. And uh, apart from this one, sometimes the patient may be saying that I am seeing my death scene or some pink color of images are standing in front of me like that. So you can suspect that the patient may be having a hallucination, visual hallucination and that comes the perception. Come to the next one, the orientation. So here we'll see the patient is oriented to time, place or person. We can ask certain simple question like what may be the approximate time now, what's the date today, where are you, when did you admit to this, this hospital, uh, like that simple question even uh, who am I, what's your name, nearby any staff nurses, you can ask their name. So if the patient is able to tell properly, you can say that the patient is oriented to time, place and person. Come to the next one, it is the attention and perception, sorry, attention and concentration. So how we can assess this attention and concentration? Ask the patient to uh, count digit forward and backward, repeat few, means you can give certain uh, five flower name, five fruits name, ask the patient to repeat that one. And in the concentration area, you can say that subtract seven or subtract three from hundred and count backward. So like that you can ask certain question to the patient. Then come to the memory. So here the, it will assess the ability to recall. Again, we'll assess the immediate memory, recent memory, remote memory. So immediate memory means within a few minutes what happened. So you can as a continuation of attention and uh, concentration, you can go for this one. So few words you have already asked, you can uh, ask the patient to repeat that one. Or in the recent memory, you can ask a certain question like what you had in the breakfast, what was your dinner yesterday night, and in the remote memory, you can ask certain past events. When did you complete your 10th standard or 12th standard? Or what is your marriage date? What is the date of birth of your uh, child? Like that certain simple question you can ask for the remote memory. Come to the next one. It is the intelligence and abstract thinking. 
So the intelligence and abstract thinking uh, here will mainly assess the patient's level of knowledge and patient's uh, logical thinking. You can ask the question, it is related to the patient educational status and level of understanding. A simple question like uh, uh, who is the prime minister of India or who is the prime minister, oh, sorry, who is the president of India. Then you can ask simple arithmetic question like 36 plus 64, what is the answer? Then in the abstract thinking, the logical thinking area, you can ask the patient to explain the meaning of certain proverbs or certain similarities or differentiation between certain objects, like what is the difference between an apple and an orange, or what is the difference between a table or chair, like that simple question you can be asked to the patient. And now we'll see the last component of MSc, that's insight and judgment. In the insight, we'll see whether patient's awareness regarding the disease condition. So we'll ask the patient, uh, are you aware of your disease condition, or what are the treatment you are taking, or uh, after discharge, what is your plan? So such type of simple question we'll ask to the patient. And come to the next one, it is the judgment. It is related to the awareness of the situation and the decision-making capacity. So here we'll ask the patient like after discharge, what, what is your plan, what you are going to do? Or if you are seeing a house, it is getting fire, what you'll do? Or you are sitting in a theater, the screen is getting fired, what you'll do? Or on the way, you are getting a letter having an address. So if you get that letter, what you'll do with that letter? So such type of question you can ask to the patient. And if the patient is able, able to tell properly, you can say that the patient is having a proper judgment. So these are the important components of mental status examination or MSc. So that's all for uh, today's class. This is Vishan signing off. Till we meet the next class. Thank you.